Hey guys, welcome back. Till now we were discussing about primitive data type in my previous videos. So if you are going through all the videos one by one, you would have learned we discussed about string and the different string methods. And we also discussed about the primitive data type, which is integer, boolean, char, byte, etc. And then we also started discussing about the non-primitive data type or a reference data type, which is string. And another which we are going to discuss today is arrays. So arrays is a reference data type. So what is basically an array? So let's think in this way. When you want to create five different variables of a same data type, let's say an integer, and you want to store a data in it. If you look at the example over here, what I did, I created five different integer variables, A, B, C, D, E, and I stored different values in those variables. So if there is a need of storing multiple values of a same data type, then there is a one way I can create a different different variables like I did it over here. The another smart way of doing this is instead of creating multiple variable of same data type, why can't I simply create a single variable, let's say of type array, which can store all these five values, right? Isn't it a smart way? That's it. So array is basically a bucket where you can store multiple values of a similar data type. So here in this example, I am, I am going to I'm going to explain how we can store a different values of a similar data type, which is an integer into an array. So I can call it as this is an array of type integer, or I can simply say an integer array. Okay. So let's go back and see what's the definition of array. So collection of multiple values of a same data type stored in a single variable, right? It is a data structure where we store similar elements. In another words, I can say Java array is a, in Java is index base. First element of the array is stored at 0 at index. So what is this index? You don't worry. In further slide, I'm going to explain you what exactly is that. Okay. So once again, to repeat, so whenever we need to store a multiple value of a same data type, then we need to store it in some variable called as array. So let's see how exactly this array works and what is this index and all. Okay. So there are two different ways, or I can say two different syntax with which you can define an array. So in previous examples, when we were discussing about a primitive data type, we saw how to define an integer, right? It's pretty simple, just int a equal to value, that's it. Whereas in array, you can define array in this syntax. So let's go through it. Int, which is a, a type of data, which you are going to store it, or I call it as data type. Then there is a <coughs> starting and closing bracket. You will have to uh, uh, write these brackets and then the name of an array equal to new keyword, Int and this is the size of array. Okay, so this expression or this syntax indicates or define I am creating a array whose name is num and num and it is of type integer and I'm interested to store 10 values. So this is one of the syntax. Another syntax is here. In the same way, I can also define int a bracket new int this. So what is the difference? Only is this square bracket instead of after a data type, I just I just uh, placed it after a name of array. Okay, so it's pretty same. We'll we'll see that when we do a practical. Now, what is an index? So index is nothing but where exactly your data is going to store in a memory. So if you look at this example right now, here what I'm doing, I am creating an array of index ten of, of size ten. Means I'm interested to store ten values in this array. In this example, if you look at this, the index value is 12. So I am interested to store 12 values of integer in an array, but how it gets stored. So we call a of zero means the first value in an array will get stored at the index zero. So basically it starts from zero and not from one and it goes till 11. So you will say sort of where is 12. There is no 12. The reason because the maximum index size is equal to your actual value given in this square bracket minus one. Okay. So if you are defining the array of 500, the maximum index where it's going to store is 499. Okay. Because it starts from zero, so zero, one, two, three, and whatever values you're going to store in those indexes are going to come like this zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So in case I want to access the value, which is at index fifth, right? Which is at index fifth. So if you look at this system.out.println a of 5 means 
I want to extract or I want to access a value which is at 5th index. So basically the output is going to be 6. The value which is stored at index 5 is 0. Don't worry about where it stores and all. The only thing you need to know is array is a collection of multiple multiple values of a similar data type. It's a bucket where you can store multiple values in a single data type and you have to define how many values are you going to store store or how many values are you interested to store in that array and whenever you want to access a particular value from an array you should be knowing from which index i should be i, I, I should be able to grab that value okay so it will reserve the space in a memory in this in this particular sequence starting from 0 till 11 fine now array can be of one dimensional array two dimensional array or multi dimensional array so don't get confused or don't start thinking too much complex about this. Right now we are going to discuss only one dimensional array. But yes, you should be knowing what is two dimensional array as well. And I would say the most of the time you will be using one dimensional array. And there will be cases where you will be interested to use a two dimensional array as well. So in my further tutorials, not in this, maybe a next playlist where I'm going to discuss about the complex or, or a next level of Java concepts there we will talk about the two dimensional and multi dimensional arrays. Okay, so let's go back to our Eclipse and start understanding how to basically define an array and how to access the values inside an array. Okay, so once again, I'm going to create a new class under this package. So new class will name these classes arrays. Okay, so I'm not going to check this because this is going to create by default a main method. So let's not do that and we'll manually create it. So you can see under this package, I've created a class. Now we know the hierarchy. First is package, then class, and then we need a main method. So which is an executable method, right? So how to create a main method? A very simple, just type main, control, and space. So it will give you a pop-up. So just double click it. So it has created a main method for you. This is the simplest way. Or while creating class itself, if you would have clicked that checkbox, it will automatically by default create a main method for you. Fine. So let me tell you the primitive data type, like let's like say int a equal to 5. This is how we used to create an integer variable and store a value in that. Correct? This is a traditional way, or this is a simplest way of defining an integer variable and storing a value. But as I said, now we are learning an array. And as I said, array is nothing but a bucket which stores multiple values of the same data type. So I can create an array of type integer. I can create an array of type string and so on. So let's see how to create an integer array. So here I'll say integer array. Okay. So there are two ways with which you can define an array or basically a syntax. So how to do that? I said int then you have to use this square brackets and then give the name of array let's say num equal to then the new keyword and then again int and then here you will have to define the size of array which is basically i am saying 5 so basically here i am saying i am interested to store five values in this num array this is one way of defining an array the another way is pretty simple int here i'll say num2 and then I'll give a square brackets equal to new int and then again a size of array. This is another. So based on your comfort, you can you can use any of this syntax to define an array. Fine. So the moment you give a size, it will store or it will reserve that much, that much space on your system so that it's ready to accept five different integer values in an array. Now how to store the values? Okay. Basically, how to access the how to store and how to access the values from an integer array so now so because my name of an array is num i'll grab this i'll say num and then i have to define as i said array indexing starts from zero which means at zeroth position which value am i interested to store so let's say here i'm going to store 10. so this is the first index where i'm interested to store value 10. then i'll say num at index 1, I want to store a value 20 and so on. So basically, you can define any index and store a value in that. Right? 
you will ask Saurabh, what if I don't store values in some of the index, which means there might be a chance that I have defined an array of size 100 and uh, while working on the program, I may store value only at 10 indexes or 20 indexes. What about the others? You will see an example what happens if I do not access an index or if I do not store a value in a particular index, what happens? We'll try to print them and we'll see what the garbage value or what is the by default value it stores on those indexes. Fine. So here, what we have done, once again, array is a collection of multiple values stored in a, of a same data type stored in a single variable. Array indexing starts from zero. So whatever the size of array you have defined, the maximum index of an array is size minus one. While storing the value in an array, you have to define a particular index number where you want to store the value. So let me remove this zero. So basically here, if you look at this, this compiler is giving us an error saying like the left hand side of an assignment must be a variable. So basically it's, it's saying this is not a correct way to store a value in an array. So here, or if I try to give six, see here, as I said, the size is five and index starts from zero to four. What will happen if I'm trying to store at sixth index? Basically it doesn't exist, right? So what will happen? We'll see that example as well. So let's go with a simple one right now, zero. So here we have stored a three different value of the same data type, which is an integer into at zeroth position one and five. So still we have two, and sorry, five, it has to be four because the last index is four. The size is five, my bad. Okay, so now let's try to print. So how to print? Just type CISO, simple, control space, double click, system.out.println, and here in double quotes, I'll say, printing value at zero index equal to, how to do that? We know whenever we want to access a value from a variable, we use plus symbol to concatenate that and then control space. So it will show you all the variables in that particular method. And then here, this is the num, right? This is the integer. We have created a two different integer array. So this is the one I'll say, and then which at which position I am interested to print at zero. And then save it. So now if I run this program, at this position, what value it should print? It should print 10. Let's see. I'm going to run this. And in console, we will see. You can see it has correctly accessed a value 10, which is stored at index 0, and it correctly printed that value. Let's repeat this or other index values as well. So 0, 1 at index 1, at index 2, at index 3, and then at index 4. Guys, I always keep on saying this. Please do a practice. Whenever you are learning from my videos, I strongly recommend to pause a video, do a practice along with whatever you are listening in a video, then come back, then play it again. And that's how you're you going to gain more and more confidence and we will learn. Okay, so let's try to clear the console output and run it again. Pretty great. Now you can see the difference. The first index, which is zero, it correctly printed a value 10, which we stored. Index one, 20. But how about index two and three? We didn't store anything, right? So this is how <clears throat> this is how you are going to get an output because you didn't store anything at that particular index. By default, it printed zero, right? And then thirty, which is at the fourth index, correct? Now let's try to print five, which is out of basically an index. So again, I'm going to clear the console and run it. We'll see whether we get any error. Yes. If you see here for the last line while executing a line number 26, the compiler says there is some exception. And what is this index out of bound exception? So this exception, whenever you get this exception while running your automation script or while running your program, you should understand by looking at an exception that there is something wrong with my variable assignment or I'm trying to access an index which basically doesn't exist. 
So basically here the fifth index doesn't exist because the size of my integer array is 5 so that the maximum index value is 4. That's the reason it gave me this exception, right? So pretty simple. Now let's try to see how I can define a string array in a similar way. Like we have defined an integer array in a similar fashion, we can define a string array. How to do that? String again, square brackets. Uh, I'll say uh, I can name like ABC. And then equal to here, I'm going to tell you another way to store values in an array. So this is the one way to define an array and store a value. In another way, what you can do is you can also store it in this way. So here to store an array, we need double quotes. So I'll say here, uh, what I can say, I'll say sorta, the first value I can store my name, comma, then second, I'll say Java learning, and then the third value I can store it is automation. Fine. And then, so here, if you see in this example, we have created a string array and we stored three different values. So basically, I didn't define a size. So because I directly stored the value in a string array, it understands that what should be the size of my string array. And in that way, it, it creates that indexes in your memory and store that particular values, which is sort of Java learning and automation in those indexes, right? Now let's try to print them in a similar way. How to print them? System dot out instead of num. Now I'm going to say ABC because this is the my string array. So it, I'll simply replace this with ABC, right? And I don't need last print statement because I have only three values. Fine. Save it. Now let's run this. Okay. So this is still showing an exception so i'll comment this so how to comment there are two ways to comment you just type to forward slash or there is a, another simple way just select that particular line control and forward slash so this is an another way if you want to uh, comment multiple lines select all those lines which you want to comment control and forward slash so it will comment the entire part so i'm commenting entire num prints okay so now let's run this let me clear the console and let's run it. Okay, so here you can see it correctly gave me the value which is stored at 0th index, which is sort of the Java learning and automation, right? So it's pretty simple. Like we have learned about the primitive data type, how to define them, how to store a value, and how to access them in a similar way. We can we can create arrays and store the values and access them. Just keep in mind you can't combine multiple data types in a same array. And another thing is whenever you want to access a value stored in an array, you should be smart enough to understand at which index it is stored. And uh, a thumb rule to remember is whatever the size of your array, minus one is your index. That's it. Okay. Don't get confused much about it. This is a single dimensional array. And in further sessions, we are going to see two dimensional array as well. Single dimensional array, I would say, if you are mostly concentrating on automation scripts or, or you are like a uh, a Java programmer, which is at the early stage, most of the time you will be using a single dimensional array. But yes, there are some cases where you need to use or you should be using a two dimensional array. So don't worry, we'll learn about that step by step. So thanks for watching my video. And uh, I'll request you guys to please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos and uh, let me know if you have any feedback, comments, and so on. Thank you guys. See you in another video. Bye bye.